Hi guys, today I am going to talk about overview of general safety and performance requirement of IVDR. Stay tuned till end so that you don't miss any important thing. As you know, IVDR supersedes IVDD 9879EC. Essential requirements now it transferred into general safety performance requirement called as a GSPR. Before going to GSPR, we will go through essential requirement first. IVDD NHR 1 contains essential requirement covers the general requirements and design and manufacturing requirements. Essential requirement checklist commonly known as ERC. Not all essential requirement will be applicable to all devices. In case of manufacturer will have only certain criteria that will be applicable for his product. So comparing to the only certain points will be applicable in the essential requirements checklist and the manufacturer has to demonstrate the conformity with these essential requirements. ERC checklist is serves as a self-assessment tool. In IVDD, most of the product were self-certified product. ERC identifies the requirement of safety and performance. If particular point is applicable, manufacturer will give the relevant standard and provide the relevant document reference. If it is not applicable, manufacturer will give the justification or a rational way stating why it is not applicable. The method that is used to demonstrate the compliance with each applicable requirement which is nothing but the clauses. Essential requirement has a two parts, part A about the general requirement and part B about design and manufacturing requirements. Part A 5 clauses and part B 8 clauses. So we are moving on to the GSPR, many more requirement added in the GSPR that is general safety performance requirement. Annexure 1 of IVDR tells about GSPR, essential requirement had a two part, part A and part B as discussed before has got refined into GSPR which will be having 3 chapters and 20 clauses. Now we go into the detailed content of the GSPR. Chapter 1 contains 8 clauses, deals about the general requirement, the risk and the safety of the manufacturer has complained, about the safety and related risk of the intended user, the risk management, the post-market surveillance, the principle that are being carried out for safely and also tells about the transport and the storage. And next chapter is about the requirement regarding the performance and has a 10 clauses under chapter 2 performance a new criteria that has been added for this GSPR. So under chapter 2 what we will be looking into the performance characteristic chemical physical and biological property infection and microbial contamination device incorporating the material of biological origin construction of devices and interaction with their environment. Devices with the measuring function protection against the radiation electronic program of the system, the device connected to the equipped with the energy source, protection against the mechanical and thermal risk and risk posed by the device intended for the self-testing or near patient testing. These are the point or clauses which will be covered under chapter 2. Chapter 3 deals with the requirement regarding the information supplied with the device which is a labeling. In general, labeling consists of both label and instruction for use including operator's guide or manual or service manual. It has a four subclasses. So the first subclasses of the chapter 3 consist of labeling device. Second will be the information that is specifically given on the labels. And third information given on the sterile packaging. Fourth one is the information in the instruction for use. GSPR is a technical documentation that should be submitted to the notified body to pursue the certification. For demonstration of conformity, first we need applicability of a GSPR checklist. If it is applicable, we have to give the relevant document and relevant sources places. And if it is not, we should give the justification stating why it is not applicable. And then the method demonstrate the complaint which is applicable. In standards or common specification, the solution that are being applicable taking the relevant standard which standard comes under the harmonized or if anything quoted on the common specification we are going to use that. Relevant document with the revision or version number to be mapped and cross reference location of such evidence should also be shared. So these are the stages that are used to demonstrate the compliance. Thank you for watching. Hope this video is useful for you. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe for more such informative video and updates.